Good evening, and welcome to Release Your Wings. Tonight we're talking about transforming fears. I'm Dan Bagley, and I'm interviewing Shireen Chadha. So, Shireen, talk to me about whether all fears are bad or some of them useful. I think some of them are useful. Recently, I was talking to a friend of mine who lives in North Carolina, and she was saying that someone tried to break in to her property and it was young young kids and I was thinking wow these young kids obviously don't have any fear of consequences and um, that it's so important to really have fear of consequences so sometimes the fears we have such as fears of consequences help keep us in line and keep us out of trouble that we would ordinary, right, ordinarily right, go to right. what would be some fears that are dysfunctional for us I would say like fear of what other people would think uh-huh. And even fear of losing my own body. Mm-hmm. Such um, as dying. You mean. Dying, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <The dying. laughs> so, oh my gosh, where have I gone? It's not the, the fear we're talking the about. Fear, no. fear of dying, fear of losing wealth, mm-hmm. fear of losing relationships, ah. um, fear of losing position or power. Right. All of those I feel are dysfunctional. So what do we do when we are having fears of things that probably are hurting us rather than helping us, keeping us in the soup of unhappiness rather than freeing us from that? What are some of the secrets or what are some of the things to consider? You know, I was thinking when I was actually thinking about fear is that the fundamental thing that we need to understand is the relationship the soul or the being has with the human body. Mm -hmm. And when I have that, when I'm aware that I'm actually in a relationship with the body and I'm not the body. I am a soul, I have a body. Yes, and that in some shape or form I have a relationship with this body. Mm -hmm. And also that, that springboards me into a higher consciousness. And that higher consciousness actually keeps away a lot of fear. So a lot of people I know kind of don't have a good relationship with their body. They don't know how, they don't like how they look. They don't, you know, this doesn't look good on me kind of thing. Is that a, a, one of the types of fear we have? Yeah, actually what people think of me, what will people say about me, all of those things are also fear. So the first step in feeling better about self with a capital S as opposed to little self of pretending you're just who you show up to be. So what would be a first step? That relationship with the body, to have a higher consciousness and a relationship with the body is one. And another thing is I was thinking that evil, and I know evil sounds like a big word, Evil for me is actually a very small word Mm -hmm. because we play with evil a lot in our lives. And so evil can take on two forms. Mm -hmm. It can take on either a form of attraction or it can take on a form of fear. Uh And actually, and I'm playing with both at all times. Mm -hmm. And so if I am a detached observer, if I am neutral towards evil, then I'm able to see what's attracting me and the same thing that's attracting me could lead me to fear. Uh-huh. And so in case of the body, if I feel, oh, I am worth more because I look better, then there is that relationship with that very small evil. <laughs> uh-huh. So what you're really saying is attraction or attachment and aversion are two sides of the same coin and non-attachment or uh, being at peace with what is, is the... Uh, true opposite of those things, is that right? Right, And the other thing I've noticed is animosity Mm -hmm. brings fear. And so if I don't have animosity, then there is no fear. Especially in this particular case, I shouldn't be uh, hating my body so much, that there shouldn't be animosity towards my body or anyone else, Mm -hmm. but in this case. And I always feel we have to remember one thing with the body. If I breathe in fear, then my body will feel that. Mm -hmm. If I breathe in love, then my body will feel that. So what I'm hearing you say on that is that every thought we have, every, uh, well, every thought is embodied in the body. Yeah. That if I feel love, then that is what goes through. If I feel a disconnect or antipathy towards someone, then that's what's going all through the body. Right. And creating fear. (laughs) <laughs> right. Of sorts. Right. right. You know, there was, uh, when we were talking about b- breath, I was thinking yeah. that actually anyone in the world needs four things. Mm-hmm. Actually, any, all human beings need four things. They need good food, they need good water, mm-hmm. they need fresh air, and they need rest. Mm-hmm. 
basic right. basic things to keep the body functioning and i was thinking that even the soul needs those four things ah. but the food here is the food good food for the mind so yeah. how am i what are my thoughts what am i feeding myself what am i feeding in the mind ah. and then um the uh, water is that in many cases it could be different but i'll share what my right. thing is that water is watering my heart with god's love mm -hmm. and then in that state of good food and water from god's love mm -hmm. when i have that good water of god's love then automatically the air becomes fresh the atmosphere becomes fresh mm -hmm. and the vibrations of fear whether it's towards my body or whether it's towards other people starts right. going away and then when i that vibrations of rest uh, vibrations of uh, that yes. fresh air is there yeah. and then i will have better um, rest so most of that the rest is probably the result of it but the first three i really hear is how do i nourish my body and how do i nourish my soul or replenish it or rejuvenate it of sorts all, right. all of those work right. together in that right so if i am in balance if i'm not alienating myself from myself, my body, or from others, then fear dissipates, I would think. Right, right, right. Yeah. The reason why I was stressing about, about, about this is that actually is the first and the last mm -hmm. form of fear. Is one is I'm not well, or it starts that way with my relationship with the body, but also it ends that way, is the fear of death. I've heard uh, people have written and I've read it and heard talks on it that all fears are essentially fear of death at the core level. Is that fear a loss of endings, of yeah. Fear of endings. All yeah. fears are fears of endings. So even the ego on that, who would I be if I lost my position or who would yeah. I be if I lost my money? Right. So once again, a good relationship with the self is one of the first steps to right. overcoming the fears. Right, right. You know, I was thinking about angels and ghosts mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I was thinking about angels and ghosts is that actually both actually operate on a similar level and in one ghosts, has a bad feeling to and for and runs, one yeah. one creates a beautiful feeling and one creates a fearful feeling and so I have to ask myself and I feel if I ask myself this question and I transform the answer to that question, if I ask myself, am I an angel or a ghost in someone's life? Mm -hmm. And then if I transform that, then not only will I be eliminating fear from my life, but to be able to transform fear in my life, I have mm -hmm. to be able to transform fear in other people's lives. So you can't be perceived as harmful or willing to do harm in other people's lives. Yeah, like your arrogance, like you were saying, mm -hmm. your ego, your arrogance. That it shouldn't be that yeah. people are fearful of me. Right. Or even withholding love can be one of those issues, I would think. Right. That, uh, because it's not just what you'll do to someone, it's what you will possibly withhold that would make people right. fearful right. of that. Right, right. So where else do we go with this? If we are fearful of life, does that mean that we're holding anger? Um, I think fear is a main vice on its own, mm -hmm. like anger is a main vice on its I own. I see. And I feel, and it's a very negative state of consciousness, sure. like anger is a very negative state of consciousness, and I'm glad you brought up anger because then we can compare right. both. And they both actually create an effect on the mind, on the body, on the people outside in the world. And I feel that fear, to be able to really overcome fear, mm -hmm. that I have to do such good actions and su with such pure feelings, yeah that I transform my actions and then my fear gets transformed. And the way I transform my actions is I do it with pure feelings. Mm -hmm. So transforming actions and transforming thoughts and feelings sounds to me like it's each one's dependent on the other. So yeah. it's more than one always leads to the next. It's more like right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. Yeah. Thoughts, feelings lead to good actions. Good actions lead to better feelings. Uh, right. And the right. like. Right. You know, if people, there are two things I have to be worried about. Not only my own fear, but also am I creating fear in other people? Yeah. And if I take care of both of those things, and first, if I take care of making sure that fear is not being created in other people, then I feel that we are taking that one step 
and then the next step would be take fear out of my life and then the next step would be take fear out of other people's lives. So it seems to me that one of the steps is to feel benevolent toward others and does that follow that we tend to feel more benevolent to sell ourselves or is it, uh, is it not connected? Are the two not connected? Yeah, benevolence is a, you know, is, I was, when you were talking about benevolence, the thought came that when there is light, it dispels darkness. Mm -hmm. So the benevolence is a form of light. Light, it's a form of light that will dispel darkness. And so in darkness, there can be a lot of fear. Uh -huh. But if you have benevolence, if you have courage, if you have a connection with the higher power, then that really dispels fear. So, you know, fear of the unknown, particularly the way the economy goes, and, uh, you know, we're forever hearing bad news on the, uh, in the media of, you know, what's happening now. Is that something that we can look at it through a the light of our heart, a different light of sorts, and sure, not Sure, yeah, bad? different lens. I feel um, there's a word I want to use, which seems like a bad word. <laughs> and I close my ears. <laughs> uh, no, but in a way, the people think of it as a bad word, is renunciation. Uh -huh. And I feel there's a lot of happiness, a lot of joy in renunciation. Give me an example of that. Um, people are worried about the economy. Mm -hmm. But if I renounce having to go shopping all the time, or uh -huh. if I renounce, that my basic needs will be met. But these extras that I want, yeah. like a... Uh, 5, 000, a 5,000 square foot mansion or a $5,000 car payment every month or whatever it is, these yeah. extras, that if I renounce those and I feel that we are in a time when we will become victorious, mm -hmm. but I have to embrace renunciation. So when I hear you say renunciation in this context, it's unattachedness to these external things. Yeah, or um, whatever. Total unattachedness, total, total, not yes. just, just pushing away a little bit. It, it's just, boom, it's gone, my right. need. So if I am not overly attached to something, like you know, how I look, or uh, pushing it away, how I look, then the fears around that just disappear. If I'm not attached to my job, my position, my income or whatever, then the fears melt. Is that what? Right, right. And also to take that as a springboard for mm -hmm. this wonderful game that life is presenting to us. Yes. And you know, it's, I think in Christianity it's said that God doesn't give you more than you, he knows you can handle. Yeah. And so I feel this is the time when we really have to hold on to his hand Mm -hmm. And even when I hold on to God's hand, I feel even the fear of death goes away. Yeah, because of course, you know, the, the old expression we were uh, smiling at earlier, that uh, everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and it is the ultimate faith that it all works together for good, that you are not living in fear of that. Right. Although not knowing what's next, Right. will make many people go, well, yeah, but I don't know for sure. Can I go back to sure. something you said about um, everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die? Yeah. So even if people who want to go to heaven, if they're fearful of death, uh -huh. I have a solution. Please. That to really make heaven real, to make it real right now, that the way I would live in heaven, I live right now. Ah. And if I'm able to bring that in my consciousness, in my immediate surroundings, in my relationships right now, then I will not have fear of death. Yeah, I think that's good. The other piece to that that I'm thinking is fear of losing loved ones. If there's no unfinished business, if on a daily basis I am living in the heaven of, of saying, I love you, I appreciate you today, I support you, uh, and no matter what happens, then in that context, it's a lot easier to let go when that time comes and right. to have faith, which is of, in a, in a uh, rather simple way, the heaven on earth that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, because we have to make, make it practical on earth right now for us. So maybe one of the other little pieces to letting go of the fear is just to be in that state of gratitude for the life we are having in this moment and to understand we don't need the attachedness to the externals as much. 
yeah. but just to be joyful, as joyful as possible as we right. are today. Right. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. And I hope you've enjoyed our little conversation about overcoming fears. Good night. <laughs>